This is the last debate organized by the University of Białystok within the project Mission 30 Open University. Study abroad, study at the University of Białystok. Situated in the naturally beautiful and geopolitically important location, the University of Białystok is a prominent academic center in the city and in the region. We are close to the eastern borders of Poland. We serve as a window of the European Union to the east. It is both an important and a difficult role. The University of Białystok is proud of its variety of international cooperation agreements signed with partner universities from all over the world. Each year, we are delighted to host foreign students and visiting professors. Each year, we are happy to send our students and our academics abroad. Studying, teaching abroad, spending a semester or a year at a foreign university has become a natural possibility, one of many choices our students and our faculty can make. Believe it or not, but I do remember times when it was hardly, if ever, possible. It is never enough to appreciate the freedom to make such choice. What is special about studying at the University of Białystok? What is special about teaching here from a foreign perspective? I am honored to ask these questions today to our special guests. Charles Szymanski, originally from the United States, currently visiting professor at the Faculty of Law, University of Białystok. Anna Mai, Director of the University of Białystok, Department of International Programs. Anna Partenadze and Anna Tavdirgidze, students from the Shota Rastaveli State University in Batumi, Georgia. And Wojciech Wasilewski, student from the Faculty of Law, University of Białystok, also from the student self-government body at our faculty. Thank you very much for joining us. My name is Isabella Kraśnicka, and I am proud to serve as the Vice Dean for International Cooperation and Development at the Faculty of Law, University of Białystok. Welcome to the debate. Thank you for joining. Thank you for coming, for spending this time with us. And I do have a couple of questions, and we'll start with the one concerning the city and the sense of the city. When I say Białystok, what are the first three words that come to your mind when I say Białystok? Anna. Um, if I had to describe Białystok in three words, I would say welcoming, well, challenging, and international. Why challenging? Well, uh, it's really hard to stay away from your homeland and with your loved ones. Even uh, doing your daily, daily basis is hard sometimes. So yes, it's definitely challenging, but manageable. Very sincere answer. Thank you. Thank you. Anna, how about you? So I will say mm, comfortable, organized, and freezing, but in terms of weather. Freezing in terms of weather. Yes. Is it too cold? Yes, it's too cold. We are not accustomed to cold winter. And um, in our country, we rarely have minus five or minus six. And that's the reason why I said this word. Well, I hate to say that, but we, it might get colder here in the days to oh. come. You know that. All right. Well, stay warm. Okay. And there are, there are things to keep you warm in the city. Well, maybe the welcoming mm -hmm. atmosphere in the city. How about you, Wojtek? Student perspective on the city. Probably childhood, since I since my birth, I live here. Mm -hmm. uh, also, uh, the university because uh, it's a large part of uh, of the city and of also of the society, uh, especially in my age group. Mm -hmm. And um, let's say Jagiellonia, our uh, our club. All right. Well, you need to explain that. Why Jagiellonia? Why this sport? Jagiellonia, so it's our local uh, football club. Mm -hmm. uh, lastly, uh, they took, uh, they won some prizes in Extra Klasa. Uh, so uh, we, as a local society, are very proud of them. All right, well, makes sense. And I'm glad that sports is a part of students' life at the university as well. Well, how about an adult perspective? Anna. Okay, for me, the first word will be home. 
mm-hmm. uh, because it's it's my home. Bialystok is my home. Uh, the second is comfortable because uh, I think that like uh, although uh, over the years there is like s- much more cars uh, over here, there is still like not like very bad place to live in terms of traffic and um, communicating to I mean commute to work. And the third word will be Patsbarnitsky because I think it's like typical like building which comes to your mind in terms of like our city so those okay. three well, I like the commuting part how long does it take you to get to work every morning uh, actually it's not so bad uh, although I have to drop my kids to school okay. <laughs> so it's a little bit longer but normally if I go straight from home and I live a little bit on the suburbs uh, so it's like 15 minutes 15 so. minutes mm-hmm. not bad huh yeah is it does it take you long to get to the faculties you're studying at No, it's about 10 or 15 minutes by bus. All right, and you are both at the Faculty of Philology, right? University yes. of Bielistok, which is located in the city center, so that's good. Vitek, how about you? So, how long does it uh, take you? For me, circa about 15 minutes, 15 minutes. 20 minutes. It depends on the yeah. traffic. Well, for a size of the city the Bielistok is, this yes. is not bad at all, right? So it's one thing that is worth underlining for those who are willing to come and uh, become part of our academic life. Charles, Bielistok. Yeah, my three words would be uh, friendly, high quality. You know, that's one word, it's a dash, and uh, sustainable. Friendly, the people here are just wonderful. It's one of the nicest parts of Poland uh, in terms of the environment, but also the human environment. People are really great. Uh, quality, it, it's a university town, as, as we'll talk about the university a little bit later. But that means cultural opportunities are here, uh, cafes. Uh, it's not uh, an isolated area. It's really rich intellectually. And uh, sustainable, I, I, we could talk about that a lot, but I would say the environment. You know, People have said this is the green lungs of Poland, and it's true. Uh, there's so many parks, so many green spaces. Uh, it's just a, a pleasure to be here. Okay. Well, how about, in, from your perspective, language-wise? How is Białystok in terms of communicating as a foreigner? Yeah, because it's a university town, you know, the, especially with the University of Białystok based here, Uh, a lot of people speak English, uh, especially younger people. And I would say that outside of the university community, uh, people do know some English, and if they don't, they really try. They, they, try, to make, they try to communicate, they try to be friendly. Mm-hmm. And so you always feel welcome, and you can get your point across, I think. Lovely, thank yeah. you. Well, I think from what we heard, it goes without saying that Białystok is a good city to be studying or to be teaching at. Uh, even though our location is not on the seaside, it's not in the beautiful mountains, it's not very far to the to the west, it has its uh, adventures in terms of the of the location. I can just add that it's also worth to travel a little bit outside Białystok, right? There are lakes, there are forests. It is the green lungs of Poland area, and that adds to the, well, comfort, uh, comfort of breathing that is also a treasure uh, nowadays. Well, it's worth uh, uh, studying uh, in Białystok. Uh, We do have a couple of universities here and possibility of studying in Białystok is a wide one. But we are University of Białystok and we are proud to be the main academic center in in the city and the region. What does University of Białystok have to offer as a university? I'm looking at Anna, who runs international programs for many years. I've had a, uh, a pleasure and an honor to working with her for, for many years. Anna, what is so special about our offer? Uh, first of all, thank you so much for this pleasure part, working with me. So uh, I'm honored too. Um, uh, well, basically, from my perspective, uh, Uh, our international cooperation office, we uh, take care of the students both incoming and outgoing and uh, it's our focus to uh, basically, um, like the whole internationalization is very important for us uh, in terms of the our office but also in terms of our university. Uh, why University of Bewistock? I think that um, there's m- many reasons. A uh, few of them w- you mentioned already. Um, so uh, the location, um, it's actually a very nice area, very convenient um, and commute to work, to, uh, to school. Um, so definitely there's a lot of things to uh, also see outside Białystok as well. And this whole region, it's actually very, um, 
like uh, full of um, heritage, like from Jews to uh, Ukrainians, uh, Lithuanians, also Tatar, even. So it's actually very, uh, very nice heritage. Um, and actually, our education offer, uh, we do offer studies um, in English on both bachelor and master degree level. So, um, like, if uh, an, anyone is interested, we offer uh, studies uh, in terms of, uh, I mean, like, in the field of uh, English philology, uh, computer science, international relations, medical physics. So... Um, Definitely, we welcome international students, but we're also very proud of uh, doing the uh, exchange programs. That's uh, right, because the first part is when someone wants to come here and yes. get a foreign degree, yes. right, bachelor or master, and we offer that part. But a lot of the times, those are shorter uh, terms and shorter periods of stay at the university. What is the offer for those students? Well, uh, for sure, uh, first of all, uh, Erasmus program. So we've been participating in the Erasmus program um, since 1999. Uh, I remember. Yeah, so uh, right now there's a new perspective of the program, seven-year perspective. So uh, we signed the new agreements for the next seven-year periods uh, with over already with over 200 universities. Um, and uh, we do also cooperate with partner universities, meaning um, countries outside the European Union. Mm -hmm. um, so for those who don't know, the Erasmus program... Um, covers both uh, cooperation with EU countries and uh, with the countries outside European Union. So uh, with the other uh, group of countries, those outside the European Union, we also uh, work with already like 14 countries um, from South America, North America, Asia, Africa even. Um, and um, like we we going towards also like expanding this cooperation geographically. It's uh, yes, uh, we impressive. didn't cover Australia yet, but like we're getting uh, well, there. Let's let's <laughs> give us some time, all right? Let's yes, give us so some. There's always there. something to work on, yes, right? For sure. All right. Well, Anna and Anna are examples of uh, students uh, coming here from outside European Union. We are sort of used to this EU perspective on on student mobility, but you are here under different program and uh, for different reasons. Can you uh, share uh, your perspective? Uh, why did you decide to study abroad, first of all? And once you decided, that's, I mean, a clear example that you're sitting here, why Białystok? Why University of Białystok? Uh, well, studying abroad has been a very long time dream and goal for us. Since getting into Shatarostawa State University, because our home university offers a lot of exchange programs and in various countries, so we thought it was a chance that could not be overlooked. And the main reasons why I think most students choose to study abroad is the fact that you can you get, get a chance to get out of your comfort zone and try independent lifestyle that every young people want. And when everything is new in different environment and exciting as well as kind of scary, if I'm being honest. Um, also, uh, when we received list of universities, um, of course, we did some research about all of them. But uh, classes that are taught here are very suitable for us and our future profession. Uh, I mean, they are not uh, too different, that it's too challenging and unable to handle. Mm -hmm. But it is not um, too similar that it's not challenging at all, so it's very suitable. Mm -hmm. Also the country, we knew a lot about Poland, but we did have to do some research about the city. Uh, and after watching a few vlogs and reading a few articles, we had decided that this would be a perfect mm, because we have never been abroad before. It was our first time being outside Georgia. So we did not want to travel to the other side of the world. So it's far enough to try independence, but not too far that you get stressed or depressed. Um, also, uh, this place is very safe, smaller compared to other um, Polish cities and international. So yes, there are many reasons why. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I, I could also mention that um, uh, speaking in your second language or sometimes even third language is very hard, even if one has years of experience and here you gain a lot of knowledge and skills that you will use in the future. Uh, and not only about language. Well, be, before even coming here, we kind of like had a lot of things going on and one, of, uh, one part of preparation was documents documentation and we had no experience in before. However, it was hard, but now we can say that we know some technical parts about traveling, which we will definitely use in the future. So it's um, definitely uh, worth um, 
trying and coming here? Well, it, it's, it's a beautiful advertisement <laughs> to say that uh, studying abroad is uh, a long-term dream is something that we, from the administration level perspective, would like to hear from every uh, student that we received. And we want more of you. Uh, if you have more of you, please uh, send those uh, to us. Uh, you also uh, mentioned your comfort zone. I believe that in the world after pandemics and in the world in between and among all kinds of wars, getting out of your comfort zone is a challenge um, unprecedented, right, in uh, before. So it takes the courage uh, to leave. And I know this is not your third, fourth, or tenth visit outside your country. Is that right? No, it's our first time being outside Georgia. There you go. So uh, thank you for choosing uh, Białystok. But you, you never left your country before, and you speak uh, perfect English. How did that happen? Uh, I need a recipe. Oh, well, first of all, in Georgia, um, young people always take additional classes in English. Also, we study English philology, so it's kind of mandatory to speak English. So, yes, that would be the reason. Well, congratulations to you and your uh, educational system. Thank you. Anna. How, uh, how about you? What yes, are your so, thoughts? As Anna mentioned, we always wanted to take part in exchange program. And you say we because you are friends, right? Yes, and we are it's friends. also for the first time experience doing it in a team of uh, good friends. And we are course mates. All right. Okay. Yes, and uh, I think that it's a great opportunity um, to, exp uh, to experience something new and uh, just uh, get out of your comfort zone. And with exchange program, uh, you can study for free with scholarship assistance. And I think that's the biggest advantage mm -hmm. of studying abroad. Uh, it also helps you to build independence. As, um, uh, for example, in my case, I was not as independent as I am today. Uh, me and Anna have learned a lot of things while being abroad, and now we are dealing with different situations together. Uh, so, um, uh, standing abroad also um, ha um, gives you t the chance to just um, explore new cultures, new languages, and uh, uh, just new opportunities. It gives you new opportunities. and. Uh, uh, for example, we, um, when it comes to traveling, uh, we have already been to Germany and we are also planning to visit other countries as well. Uh, I strongly believe that uh, studying abroad also um, uh, help, will help you to um, gain um, new experience and it will help you to see things from different perspectives and then you will be able to share this knowledge and um, uh, this uh, experience with other students mm -hmm. and that's also the biggest advantage. And so. it's also very important for us because if you are happy here, if you think that this, ex this experience is worth the effort, getting out of your comfort zone, gaining independence, and then you go back and share these thoughts, right, and recommendations with others, others may be ready or yes, more ready than here. they thought they were to, to pick up that experience. Well, that's wonderful to hear. And it's also great to hear that you are learning it's not only about learning the English philology part, but it's also also learning life. Where do you yes. live in Białystok? Where do you stay? At the student um, dormitory? Yes, we stay at the student dormitory. And uh, about this, I can say that uh, it's very con it has very convenient location as university is really close and supermarkets and other places are really close. Bilisok is uh, quite um, small and uh, it reminds us of our hometown Batumi, which is as quiet, as comfortable and small uh, city as Bialystok. And that, should be, that should be used as an advertisement line that uh, uh, Bialystok is like Batumi. Yeah. I like that. I like that part. I think it, it has a, a great message. Yes, and since it's not a big uh, town, we get accustomed to it easily. Mm -hmm. And now I want to mention why Bialystok. So there are several reasons, uh, but um, uh, mostly I think that uh, students um, choose this or that, uh, that country uh, when they are just comparing subjects. For example, when we compared the classes um, of University of Bialystok to our home university, we found out that most of them were quite similar and very, int very interesting. So that was also an important factor for us. Uh, and before coming here, we searched a lot of information about Poland and we know that it has um, high educational standard and uh, a much lower cost of living. Uh, everything here is affordable and prices are not as high as, for example, in France or in Germany. It has great location and that's the main reasons. 
I think. Well, those are important reasons. Uh, taking a decision to go for a semester or a year abroad is not only um, an educational decision, but it's also an economical decision. Yes. So taking all those factors into considerations, into consideration, um, well, makes the decision uh, worth it. And then uh, coming back with the, with the happy thoughts. Well, we heard from the international students, but uh, Wojtek, I'm looking at you and I'm thinking you are very active in uh, in the student life uh, at the Faculty of Law, but also on the university level. And my Probably. question to you would be, what is cool about being a student at the University of Białystok? First of all, I would say uh, about the variety uh, of uh, fields of, of my uh, education uh, and the variety of fields of some uh, work. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, uh, uh, during, my, during my educational process, I, I do some things uh, at the university, at the faculty, uh, that are not connected to uh, to these subjects to uh, w which are in my program so uh, you're not glued to the law right to the legal stuff. yeah but okay. i also uh, it is possible for me uh, to to do something else like uh, we are we are organizing events uh, we uh, are part of some uh, international groups uh, are part of some international uh, in events like circles. Mm -hmm. uh, yep also uh, also international events like lastly in Oravice mm -hmm. uh, from my perspective also uh that's okay. From your perspective, when you see a foreign student at the Faculty of Law, do you think they are happy at the faculty? Do you feel well do, do they feel welcome? Probably. Uh, also, uh, we as, as students are trying to welcome, uh, uh, despite of our uh, also language barriers, but we, tr we, we are trying to, uh, to welcome their... And to support them. Yeah. Right? There is a, uh, I know there is, at the Faculty of Law, there is a special international cooperation student group that welcomes and supports foreign uh, students. There is also an Erasmus uh, uh, student group that operates at the university and at the in-between universities uh, level. So I, I truly believe that it is, uh, that it is good. And, um, well, that's, uh, uh, that is great, and uh, I am also proud to say that, the, that our faculty, I'm looking at Wojtek because we are from the same faculty, welcomes international students also, uh, also every year, and yes, you are good hosts, and I hope you do continue to do that. Um, all right, well, uh, that's studying, that's the, that's the fun part, right? That's uh, uh, going abroad, that's uh, making a, a decision to dedicate part of your, uh, of your time during studies um, to do do that. What is the professor's perspective? You, you've traveled the world. Uh, you've taught at different uh, uh, country, in different countries and at different universities. What is your perspective as a professor, as a visiting professor, uh, on what we offer and what we have here at the University of Białystok? I think, from my perspective, from a professor's perspective, uh, the students are just great. And at the University of Bialystok, I would say uh, it reaches a, what I would call a sweet spot. Um, the students uh, are, you know, are very interested, I think, in the lectures and the different types of topics that the professors offer to teach. Uh, so they have an engagement. Uh, they're also uh, very respectful, too. So it's not, uh, you know, they listen to what you have to say. Uh, their their questions and comments. Are, yeah, but if you tell me they always do their homework, I will not believe you. No, I, I won't go that far. But uh, uh, <laughs> you know, you you, you, found, you feel like part of the family here as as a teacher, as an instructor, and I would say that that's rare. Uh, on the other extremes, uh, sometimes students can be disinterested, or they could be aloof. You know, they could uh, not treat the lecture so seriously. But here, it's just right right in the middle and. It's really a pleasure to teach. I think that's one of the 
uh, the, the best aspects. And of how do you there. find yourself among other professors and other faculty members? I know professor has a different meaning here than it has in the United States, but I'm asking about your comfort zone uh, among us, among uh, teaching uh, sector of the university. Yeah, exactly. That would go, was going to be my next comment. Uh, you know, apart from the students, the, the faculty has been really great, and they try to integrate foreigners, people from other countries who are actually here teaching as visiting professors or under an Erasmus exchange. Uh, I've always found them to go the extra mile, say hello, what are you doing? Maybe there's something you could be involved with here. So it's not only in the classroom, but it's in the hallways and the administration. And they, it, my example, they've always made me feel really welcome. And I think they've also made other foreigners who have been teaching here feel, feel at home as much as possible. Great. And do you feel um, any pressure or any need, uh, if not pressure, to learn the language? I mean, Polish is a difficult language to learn. And I know you've taught at different uh, universities in other parts of uh, Europe and you, uh, well, speak other languages as well. How do you find Polish to be the language of instruction? Yeah, Polish is really one of the most difficult languages. It's true. You know, if, if they if you use these, uh, you know, charts or rankings of the most difficult languages, it's, I think it's close to Japanese in terms of like the grammatical structure. Uh, so my advice would be to take it step by step. And if you do as a foreigner come here and learn some phrases, learn some key words, uh, it goes a long way to opening doors. I think uh, Polish people understand how difficult a language it is, and if you try to engage, that's the first step, and it makes it that much easier. So right. don't let that be a barrier. Right. It is It is difficult. When we were trying the microphones before uh, starting the debate, Wojtek said a very difficult phrase uh, in Polish. Can you repeat that, please? Now, how do you, how, what did you hear when he said that? Mostly shoes and shoes. <laughs> <laughs> so what's your perspective on the Polish language? Is it hard? Do you feel the need to be speaking the language or is it enough to just say a few words and those words open the doors? Uh, I think it's quite hard language, but we have learned uh, some of quite simple words and uh, just that's enough maybe. We speak uh, in English and... Uh, that's enough. Right. Well, it is, certainly you can communicate and, and communicate very well. Wojtek, what would you be your advice to foreign students? What are the three words in Polish that they should learn? But words... Uh, in Polish. Okay, but uh, from the daily basis? Yes. Gotówka. Cash. So cash. Uh, Legitimacja. Student ID Student card. ID card. Um, hmm. Another one that is a, a kind one, maybe. Dziękuję. Thank you. All right. Well, if you know these three words, and I like the cash and the student ID. This gives a, a, a true student perspective, right? And you, do, you would you think about those words in the first place, Charles? No, cash, no. But that, you know, that, that's a good perspective, right? It, it is. How do you right? pay for How, things? Yeah. Exactly, right? And a student ID, again, in their world, it is what makes it easier to go around yeah. the city and go around the uh, go around the university. All right. Um, and uh, what do you find? most surprising about studying at the University of Białystok? I'm looking at Anna and Anna here. Okay. Um, so um, there are a lot of international students and uh, before coming here we thought that there won't, uh, they wouldn't be um, as many students as they are but uh, it turned out to be the opposite. Uh, we have a chance to communicate with students from different countries and get to know their culture, their languages, and yeah, something Anna, about I'm sorry, them. Anna, how many students do we have, international students? Around 100 uh, students in terms of the Erasmus program, and also around like 20, 30 students in non-degree program. So it's almost 150 foreign students uh, mm -hmm. all over the university. That's a good number, yes. right? Um, and um, we should also also mention ESN, International Students Network, mm -hmm. and um, it um, just plans different uh, activities, uh, trips, and we've participated in some of them. And that's the biggest advantage of this organization. We really like it. And mm -hmm. there we also met many people. They're really fr friendly and uh, really helpful. 
So what Wojtek said is true. Yes, that that's they true. They try to help and, and support. Well, good mm -hmm. job. All right. Mm -hmm. Next surprising thing for us was um, that here in Bielistok we don't have midterms, but in our country uh, every university um, has midterms around this time, and our course mates have recently finished their midterms, and we write these exams in the middle of the semester, and we get uh, additional 20 points. And um, in Georgia, uh, we get graded almost every week, but uh, here in Bialystok, we have um, tests from time to time, but I think it has its own advantages because we don't spend more time and energy um, on preparing for exams, for example. And um, I think that uh, in this case, we are more free. Mm -hmm. So it's a different rhythm, right, yes. of education here. Okay. And we discovered that uh, in Bialystok only two absences are allowed. And uh, if you are absent, you are required to present your lecturer some kind of evidence uh, about uh, being sick or busy. But uh, in Georgia, mm, uh, it's kind of, uh, we are not required to present them evidence if we are absent. We can miss the class more than two times, but of course we have to uh, prepare the materials, also uh, get, uh, also attend the weeks in which we get graded, mm -hmm. and just be pre prepared for our final exams. All right, so mm. those are the um, student life issues yes. that come as a surprise. There's a diff that just different, uh, different attitude, right? Different rules uh, of studying here. Anna, do you have anything to add to yes. what Anna said? <laughs> Actually, surprising is the fact, like, amount of times we have been surprised, because when you're in a new environment, everything seems unfamiliar at the beginning. And we have been shocked by even the smallest details, like m many people may not even pay attention to, like no supermarkets on Sunday or time shift. Also the fact that the Polish people start their day very early, much earlier compared to the Georgian. We had never had a class at 8 a.m. before, and it was really hard at the beginning. <laughs> I'm no. looking at Wojtek. Do you agree that this is not the right rule to have starting classes at 8? Well, uh from my perspective, it is good that uh, my lectures start uh, every day uh, after 11. So, uh, well, I so you, <laughs> you have to work your way around it, right? When you, when you get to the student self-government council, maybe you, you get your schedule to start at 11. Well, good for you. But 8 o'clock is a killer, right? Yep. Sure not, thing. not very student-friendly. Unfortunately. Uh, yeah. Well, okay. So teaching, well, teaching at 8... I'm looking at Charles. Not our favorite thing, is it? Yeah, that's a challenge. But uh, uh, there, there's advantages, right? So you know, some people don't like evening classes. So if you if you're finished early, right, you could go on and have the rest of the day to, to yourself. You're <laughs> trying to defend the system. I appreciate it. All right. So yes, I, I find well, uh, that's a good surprise to to point out. Uh, what also else? Also, public transport uh, here. When we checked at the beginning, it uh, said that the buses start functioning at around 4 a.m. It is very early uh, in Georgia. It starts around 8 a.m., if I'm not mistaken. So there is a big difference in that as well. Uh, also, um, I want to mention male students. Mm -hmm. On our course, and also we talked to other exchange program students, and it's the same situation on their courses. We have some kind of balance, so they, I assume there is no stereotypical approach to a girl's or boy's profession, mostly. Mm -hmm. uh, on our course, which is philology, by the way, we have a lot of male students, which was surprising, but it's a nice surprise. Mm -hmm. um, also, mm, uh, our classes are connected to literature, and in this case, I like that we're not put in the box. Uh, we are uh, not required and uh, pressured to get the idea as the author would have wanted or the professor would like, but what we think about it. And as long as we can provide strong arguments, we're good, which we think is very, very nice. Um, and uh, I also want to mention uh, th that things are not given to you, which is not a bad thing at all. Um, uh, Surprising. Yes, <laughs> because of course lectures are conducted and uh, you're free to ask any questions, but at the end of the day, it's you who does the most work. If you want to get a good grade, you have to do some additional research and like read literature that you're not required to do. And I think it's great because it helps you to prepare uh, for the world outside university after graduating, because in the real world, I assume you have to do the additional work you're not asked for. 
in order to get something. Yeah, that's the, also the European spirit in uh, in higher education, where where your syllabus and the course you design to teach, uh, you put into the actual teaching hours in class, but you also expect students to put their independent workload into the class, right, and into the study. So yes, it is also some work and sometimes a lot of work outside the class, but it also depends on the course and on the professor, right, and yes. on, the, on the teaching methods that are used. All right, well, we've learned something here, right? We've learned some thinking here, but I'm looking at Anna and I'm asking myself and, and I'm asking you, what do you find most surprising when dealing with uh, students and professors from all over the world? What is the most surprising thing, or maybe the hardest thing to deal with? Uh, I think it really depends on the country, uh, because of course uh, every country has their own thing, like um, in terms of the language, there's a certain countries that uh, we find very difficult to uh, talk with them because their English is not on the uh, sufficient level and uh, sometimes there's like a little bit challenging but they they all trying which is which is great and of course cultural sometimes like we have to uh, we try to also learn uh, different things to uh, for those students to feel uh, a little bit like more welcome and uh, for them it will be less stressful so um, so, for example, as girl, girls mentioned, also Wojtek, that uh, ESN, the organization that helps the students, uh, one of the activities that they do is, for example, Euro Dinner or Euro Festival. Uh, around Christmas, because we, are, we have Christmas coming, so around Christmas time, uh, we organize the... Um, like it's like a feast with uh, different meals and every country uh, i mean representatives from uh, different countries they prepare their traditional food which is also great because we can learn about like their traditional food so the most surprising and us also like this is the great thing I, I love about my work to deal with different cultures to learn about different cultures to learn what like how they live and how we can you know know a little, bit, a little bit more so when we go to their countries we can learn a little bit more about them and they learn a little bit about our culture so this is the the most i think for for me the, the greatest thing at well it's uh, and i think you, you you just touched the very core of it right it's it's about learning but it's about learning from each other yes. it's not only about students coming to learn from our courses classes and professors but it's also students learning from each other, right? I remember at the Faculty of Law, we, we, we would have some Erasmus uh, uh, food parties downstairs where they would prepare different uh, um, dishes from their uh, countries, and it was a lot of fun, right? And I hope we will, we will continue to do that. Charles, any surprises on the teaching part? I think that uh, the best way I could express that I was recently, or a number of months ago, at the University of Bergen in Norway on an Erasmus uh, exchange, and I, I had the opportunity to give a presentation about the University of Bialystok because it was the first such exchange, right, uh, from a professor. And one of the things that they found most surprising was how many, the diversity of courses we had and the interesting subjects we had in English. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it really, really surprised them and they said, this is great for our students, there's so much opportunity uh, to study various different things and, and they didn't expect that. And I would say from a, a, not only from a student's perspective, from a professor's perspective, what that also means is there's lots of opportunities uh, of different classes a visiting professor or scholar could teach and also conduct research in. As you know, uh, Isa, we've had a number of uh, visiting scholars come here to do research from the United States, from Europe, from different parts of the world. And when I've met them, uh, if I'm here at the same time, uh, maybe this shouldn't surprise me anymore, but they go to various universities in Germany, in France, in the UK, and they've said that this is one of the, the best universities that they've experienced to do research in. Um, the, the faculties and the administration really does a great job of connecting scholars with their area of expertise. So we had a national security law expert. Uh, they were connected with people in public international law and also people uh, from the border guard, right, and the military. So this is really amazing. So you, you don't only get, you, you meet one professor or you're on your own. Uh, you're integrated to all the scholars in different disciplines that are connected to your research and even beyond that, mm -hmm. right? And, and I think that's 
a good surprise. Um, I'm, I'm Can glad I add you say something? That. I'm yeah, sorry. Go ahead. That, sure. Uh, well, actually, I wanted to add something. Uh, what Charles said. Um, I uh, met a lot of students and scholars as well uh, through my work, and they are actually very um, surprised with our campus because uh, they think, okay, there's Bełystok, okay, there's like somewhere like some city in the northeast part of Poland, but uh, we have very modern campus, especially researchers. They're like very impressed, and um, like the laboratories, like the, the whole facility is actually um, something that they find very like you know surprised and interesting in the same time. So well, that is true. We, I, I tend to uh, uh, think about our university in terms of being spread throughout the city because that's, that's how it started when we uh, built the, the school and when, we, when, when the university was established. But now more and more faculties are gathered around the campus. That is a, a beautiful one and, a, and wonderfully located. Philology is not yet on the campus. Law is not yet on the campus, but we are getting there. And yes, it, and I believe it will create even more sense of a community, right, of an academic yes. community. When, That's when the, the plan, and also the dormitories, uh, there is a plan to build the dormitories over there, so like, we're gonna have like a very nice campus, yeah. like, it's like... It's it's a plan, and it's in, and it's a great plan, and it's and it's wonderful to see that there is an energy and a need to pursue the plan, right? It, uh, that it's still that we are um, putting a lot of efforts, and we still believe that internationalization uh, is important. It's not as obvious. We we're sort of used to it now. It, the European borders are open. Uh, we can and we do travel, and this international perspective has become an everyday business uh, for us. But it's uh, and I will uh, say it as many times as I can, never enough to appreciate it and never enough uh, to try to do uh, even uh, more. And when I, uh, when I uh, well, heard what, what Charles was saying, again, I have a, a time reflection and I go back 20 years uh, in time when the first courses in English were offered at my law school, when it was difficult to ask our professors to have the courage to do it. Uh, and it wasn't a language barrier. It was a mental barrier of teaching in a, in a foreign language, of uh, interacting with students coming. One of the very first students who came was this French guy of Polish origin. Uh, uh, and he was the only one foreign student at the Faculty of Law, believe it or not. He had all the support he needed and all the support he wanted. But that's how it started. It started with one student and three uh, courses. And now we are proud to offer ten of them, and, and not only at the, at the Faculty of Law, but at every single uh, faculty. Uh, and that's, that's a beautiful uh, journey that, we've, um, that we, uh, we have uh, come together uh, through. Um, what would be then, uh, well, we've heard a lot of good things, and, 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 and it's time to, uh, to fill it in and sum it up with some recommendations. Wojtek, how would you recommend studying at our university to foreign students. One sentence, top two, just to make a clear, send a clear message. So, um, University of Białystok uh, has many, uh, many fields of, uh, of self-development for, for students, uh, but it's also connected with uh, affordable living uh, and some cultural cultural events uh, around here in Bielostok. That's a that's a great combination, right? On one hand, again, it's it's a place where you can develop yourself in many areas, where you can choose among the faculties, where you can choose through the courses, and you can choose through the possibilities that you make on 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 the educational level. But it's also affordable. Right? You, you, you have time and you can dedicate this time to enjoy life outside school, outside education. And this is part of studying, right? Let's face it, it's not about only about sitting in classes and learning, it's also about having fun uh, outside. And, and Białystok provide those, provides those opportunities and is affordable in, in those opportunities. Anna, how would you recommend it? Uh, I can add something because I totally agree with Wojtek, um, all of the uh, things that he mentioned. So, you know, a uh, variety of educational offer, uh, the cultural aspects of like, you know, staying over here. And um, But I would like to add two more things. First of all, uh, accommodation. Uh, we are very proud to say that like we're doing like 
so much effort to accommodate all the international students in our dormitories. And I know that it's not like a common thing, uh, especially like we send the students outside. So we know that like not in every country, not in every university. We're not calling countries, but we know there are countries yes, that do like not do that. Yes, there's like some issues and um, like with the finding the um, accommodation because the university doesn't provide one. So we really trying to accommodate all the students in our dormitories. So at, at least like they don't have to worry about that. Another thing uh, which is actually very important for us, um, especially like now these days, um, like we really uh, wanna also welcome all the students with disabilities. I would like to mention this. And we taking our um, efforts to, and participate in different projects to uh, help, uh, even like with the small things, um, like small from our perspective, but big probably from their perspective, uh, like uh, like for example, like doing the diflographic map outside um, uh, the campus. So uh, they're both in uh, Polish, in English, and in Braille. So mm -hmm. the students with, for example, vision disabilities can also um, uh, like easily um, know where the faculty mm -hmm. is, know where the building is, like even those small things. So like we're trying to put the, our focus on uh, all those things to for all the international students to feel welcome over here. Thank you. Charles, how would you recommend if I say I can hire, we can hire, yeah. Anna at the university level, can hire 10 foreign professors right now at the University of Białystok. Well, how would you recommend it? Yeah, I would say first uh, quality. You know, uh, the, the education here and the university, the, the level of research is really, really high. And so th you'll be satisfied with that. And then the second thing would be environment. And this is kind of echoing what everybody on this panel has said. Uh, the environment, the human environment, the people are really friendly. It's a good place to live and to work. And I think people, will be, professors and educators will be satisfied with that. And I don't want to lose sight of also the, you know, the, the greenness, right? That, that, that side of the environment. Uh, from a long time, when I was even traveling here from the United States, uh, other colleagues always said, it's amazing how many parks are here in the city and also uh, national parks like in, in this immediate region. And it really impresses everybody. It's quite a beautiful environment. And so for those things, uh, high quality human environment and natural environment, I think it's a, a place that uh, educators will be very comfortable. Well, it made me feel very good. How about you, Anna? Isn't it a great recommendation yes. of the university, right? And final words to our foreign students. How would you recommend studying at our university to not only to your friends in Georgia, but also to other international students? Well, if one has a goal to gain not only knowledge, but also useful skills and experience and consequently confidence in yourself, I think studying abroad in general and studying at the University of Bialystok in particular is a great choice. Because uh, now we find ourselves being less, um, underestimating ourselves much less than before because uh, we have had days that we didn't, we didn't think we would survive, but we did. So uh, you gain a lot of uh, knowledge, skills and confidence in yourself, definitely. Thank you. Anna? Mm, I would definitely recommend, and I can say that uh, people here, uh, as I've already mentioned, are really helpful and um, they will always um, uh, help students with different kinds of uh, situations, problems, and our coordinators also are really helpful people. They helped and assisted us a lot with various uh, issues. And so, because of the um, uh, great location of PLE stock and um, uh, because of uh, other, a lot of the reasons, uh, I will recommend this city and the country as well uh, um, to other students. Thank you very much. Well, and with that, I thank all of you for your time and your participation and for the kind words that we heard today. I am more than ever proud to be part of the academic life of the University of Białystok. Thank you, thank you all. And this was uh, the last debate uh, within the project Mission 30 Open University, which was co-funded by the Ministry of Education and Science. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Thank you. <laughs>